What's up everyone, my name is Frank Oval, I'm having a great day today. In today's video, I'll be reviewing Razer's latest Wolverine V2 Pro controller, and I'll be putting it up against Sony's latest DualSense Edge controller to see which controller comes out on top. As always, I'm timestamp down below in the description so y'all can't skip your part of the video that you want to see first. Today's video is made possible by Mega Mods. A huge shout out to them for supplying the controllers in today's video. Mega Mods create top tier elite modded and esports ready controllers. If you're looking to purchase one of their products, make sure to use my affiliate link found down below in the description to save a couple of bucks on your purchase. If you guys are ready for this video, smash that like button and let's get to it. Razer isn't new to the game, they've been around since 2005, creating a large gamer-focused ecosystem of hardware, software, and services. In the last few years, Razer has been developing multiple pro-level controllers, with their latest one being the Wolverine V2 Pro controller, priced at 250 USD plus tax. It was released early January 2023, and let me tell you, 2023 will be an exciting year for pro controllers as a wide variety of them will be released notably sony's dualsense edge controller scuff's reflex controller and the latest victrix pro bfg wireless controller but only one of them can reign supreme the razor controller comes in a white and blue matte finish box with glossy accents mimicking the playstation 5 color scheme at the bottom of the box we have razor's message to go green on one of the sides of the box, we have Razer's name, and then getting to the back of the box, we have additional product information. As we open the lid to the box, we are greeted by the controller nicely protected in foam padding from top to bottom. At the top of the box, a black soft touch foam padding is used with a cutout to accommodate the controller. The base of the box, a white hard, more rigid foam padding is used to keep that controller nice and snug and in place during transport. We're gonna set the controller to the side. We'll get to it in just a second. At the top of the white foam padding are the two additional thumbsticks, as well as the hyperspeed wireless dongle. Keep in mind, there are no additional accessories found at the base of the box. There is that bottom compartment, which houses the user magnet for the controller, as well as the steel braided four and a half foot long USB type C charging cable. Whereas the dual sets edge controller comes in a hard clamshell style case with charging capabilities. The case houses the controller and all of its accessories in a molded rubberized and foam material, keeping all of its components safe and secure. At the top of the case, there's additional stores that can be found. And at the bottom, there's an additional spot for an extra thumbstick module, giving the DualSense Edge a more premium first impression. The Razer controller is lightweight, but has a bulky Xbox style shape to it, asymmetrical thumbstick design, larger bumpers and triggers similar to the Xbox controller. The Razer logo is glossy on the touchpad, which is a very nice touch. The controller is outfitted with cool RGB chroma lighting, as well as an amazing rubberized grip from front to back on the handles, greatly improving grip. On the back of the controller, you can find various buttons to switch between PC, PlayStation, wired, and wireless play, as well as a total of six remappable back buttons. The controller also has the ability to apply trigger locks. Razer did decide to remove the haptic feedback in the triggers and remove the rumble motor, so there are no vibrations whatsoever on this controller, which is great for FPS play, but will be missed by pro players who rely on vibration in those various games. The only method for connecting your controller wirelessly to your PlayStation or to your PC is to use the provided 2.4 GHz hyperspeed wireless dongle, which allows for low latency gaming. You'll notice that Razer has included their signature color on the wireless dongle and on their USB cable, which is very cool. You're also able to use the controller wired to the PC and to the PlayStation by using the provided four and a half foot long steel braided USB type C cable. For those of you who are into RGB lighting, the Razer controller provides various colors and styles to choose from. The Razer controller weighs in at only 279 grams compared to the heavier 325 gram DualSense Edge controller. Although a heavier controller makes for a more premium feel, a lightweight controller is beneficial during those long gaming sessions as your wrists and hands won't get fatigued as easy. Although I find that the Razer control is too light and the DualSense Edge controller is slightly too heavy, I'm still going to give this round to Razer. 
the Razer controller has the 3.5 millimeter headphone port and mic mute button. Keep in mind that the mic mute button only works when you're using a wired headset and there won't be any notification that shows up on screen. The mic mute button will turn on in orange. You'll also notice that Razer has eliminated the speaker, so there won't be any audio that passes through and comes out of the controller, and you won't be able to speak through the controller. Whereas the DualSense Edge controller retains the 3.5 millimeter headphone port, speaker, and full mic mute functionality that the original PlayStation 5 controller has. Since Razer has eliminated a standard feature and eliminated the mic mute functionality, I'm giving this round to the DualSense Edge. The Razer controller comes fitted with two short concave style thumbsticks with two additional thumbsticks to choose from, a tall concave and a short convex. In order to swap out thumbsticks, it's a simple, easy procedure. Pull up on the one that you want to remove, align the one that you want to install, the magnet will pull it down and secure it into place. On the other hand, the DualSense Edge controller comes with four additional thumbsticks to choose from, greatly improving the amount of combinations that you're able to have with the thumbsticks and will accommodate a wide variety of play styles. The Razer controller, you are limited with the thumbstick combinations. For this round, I'm giving it to the DualSense Edge. The Razer controller has an impressive six remappable back buttons. Two are found up at the top between the bumpers and the triggers, and the last row are found on the backside bottom middle part of the controller. With my natural grip on the controller, I feel very comfortable using the top buttons between the bumpers and the triggers. They have the tactile switch, so it is very, very responsive and easy to use. It will take some time getting used to, as your finger will have to press two buttons at once. Coming to the bottom four back buttons, I'm having to overstretch my fingers just to reach them. It makes for an awkward, uncomfortable grip on the controller, and it's not natural to use those four back buttons. They are placed too much towards the center part of the controller. If they were placed more towards the edges of the controller, it feel more natural, more ergonomic to use. I'm gonna say that this controller is not suited for those who have smaller hands and a tighter grip on the controller, but the controller is definitely suited for those who have a larger hand and a more relaxed grip on the controller. I'm also finding that there's not enough grip on the bottom four back buttons, fingers slide off easy, but I do like that the bottom paddles curve up, you're able to rest your fingers nicely on them and it will improve your reaction time. On the other hand, the DualSense Edge controller only has two back buttons, but offer two different styles. One back button that's placed more towards the center of the controller, and the second back button style that follows the contour of the controller. The DualSense Edge back buttons accommodate a wide variety of play styles and hand sizes, whereas with the Razer controller, not everyone will be able to utilize all six back buttons. For those reasons, I'm giving this round to the DualSense Edge. All of the face buttons on the Razer controller are outfitted with the latest Mega Tactile style action buttons. The D-pad, touchpad, and bumpers are outfitted with the latest micro switches, giving you that satisfying mouse click sound. It's also going to improve your reaction time with a 0.65 millimeter actuation time and also going to improve longevity with a rating of over 3 million clicks. All of these improvements are greatly going to improve your gameplay in the games that heavily rely on the face buttons and also in the FPS games where you're using the bumpers to aim and shoot. The DualSense Edge controller has no improvements to the face buttons, D-pad, touchpad, or bumpers. They are the same as the original PlayStation 5 controller. You're definitely gonna see a greater improved reaction time with the Razer controller for those buttons. With Razer utilizing the improved mecha tactile style action buttons and improved micro switches, I'm giving this round to Razer. The Razer controller has the hyper triggers. When activated, the trigger goes from acting like a normal trigger to a short distance mouse click style, greatly improving your reaction time with the triggers. Whereas with the DualSense Edge controller, it has the trigger locks. Three different positions to choose from, a short, medium, and long distance allows for great customization, but when both controllers are at their shortest, quickest setting, the Razer controller comes out on top with the shortest distance due to that mouse click style hyper trigger. With that improvement, this round goes to Razer. The Razer controller has an impressive battery life. With the Chroma RGB turned on, you'll see around 10 hours per charge. With the Chroma RGB turned off, 
you'll see around 28 hours per charge, which is extremely impressive in comparison to the DualSense Edge controller, which is around five and a half to 11 hours per charge, depending if the vibrations are turned on or turned off. With the impressive battery life of the Razer controller, I'm giving this round to Razer. Make sure your Razer controller is connected with your console first, then open up the Razer application. Follow the on-screen parry and synchronization steps in order to pair your controller with the application. Once connected, you'll be able to choose from and edit one of the four profiles. Each of these four profiles you're able to rename and each one offers the same customization settings. Starting with remapping of the six back buttons. You have plenty of options to choose from as well as setting one of the back buttons to a sensitivity clutch. This will allow you to change the sensitivity of the left or right thumbstick. Last customization option that we have is to adjust the chroma RGB color. You have plenty of colors to choose from and plenty of effects. Keep in mind that in order to choose a profile and edit the profile, you will need to use the Razer application. Whereas with the DualSense Edge software is completely integrated into the PlayStation 5 and can be easily accessed through the controller, you're able to have up to 30 different profiles configured with four of them being saved directly onto the controller for quick activation. You're able to customize and reassign any of the buttons on the controller that you want, including the back buttons, as well as adjust stick sensitivities, dead zones, you're able to adjust trigger dead zones as well, and you're also able to customize vibration intensity and trigger effect intensity. This application is extremely powerful and allows you to unlock the full potential of this controller to fine tune your settings to perfection. For this round, since the DualSense Edge software is more customizable and powerful, I'm giving this round to the DualSense Edge. The results are in. The Razer Wolverine V2 Pro has some great features, notably the large hand grips, mega tactile action buttons, micro switches, and hyper triggers for improved reaction time. The controller also has an impressive six remappable back buttons, a large battery life, and cool chroma RGB lighting, but the controller still falls short from the mark. With the premium price tag, the controller is lacking in standard features such as a missing speaker, limited mic mute functionality, missing rumbles, and trigger effects. The controller does not come with a carrying case and only has two optional thumbstick choices. The bulky design and awkward back button placement is not catering to all playstyles and hand sizes. The app is limited in what settings it can adjust, and this controller falls short for an officially licensed Sony product. Combining all the rounds together, Razer's Wolverine V2 Pro versus Sony's DualSense Edge, I declare the winner of this head-to-head, -head, the DualSense Edge. And there you have it, today's a winner. Many more review videos to come. I'll be putting Sony's DualSense Edge controller up against a wide variety of eSports Ready Pro controllers to see which controller comes out on top as the best Pro eSports controller. If you have any question about what I spoke about in today's video, I'll be leaving a link down below to join the MegMods forum. Hop in and ask your questions. Myself and MegMods will be there to assist you. Also, feel free to leave a comment down below in the video and hit me up on social media. It's always a pleasure helping you guys out and interacting with my community. You guys are all amazing. If you all enjoyed watching this video, make sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below and share with your friends. Greatly appreciate it. If you are new to my channel, check me out for the very first time. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date my content and don't forget to press that bell to become part of my notification squad. You guys are all amazing. A huge shout out to the sponsors, to the new subscribers, to the Spar Troopers. You guys are all amazing. Everyone have a great rest of your day or night whenever you're watching this video and I'll see you all on the next one. Peace.